Welcome back to Misunderstood, everybody. I am your host, Rachel Yucatel. So we have a really fun show today. Our guest today, her name is Christy Cook. Um, so I don't know if you guys are familiar with Dumois. I feel like people that listen to this show probably know what Dumois is. It's sort of an anonymous site where they give a bunch of gossip. Um, well, so Christy Cook is, she, she's known as Spill Sesh. She has hundreds of thousands of followers. She was a mastermind behind this an anonymous T channel. It was on YouTube for five years before she unveiled this past November who she really was. She's finally showed her face. So, um, you know, it's interesting because now she's out in the open and we got a chance to chat with her and find out how she became this gigantic YouTube sensation. I asked her a bunch of questions about how you do all this, because I think a lot of people are trying to get into that you know, thing where they, you know, have a channel, um, a podcast, a show of some sort, they go, you know, they want to go viral on TikTok, but nobody really knows how to do it. She's done it. She's, she's a young girl and she can now afford to take care of herself and buy herself nice things all because she's figured out how to navigate this whole um, process of having her own channel and being a social media um, you know, influencers, so to speak. So for those of you that don't know what a T channel is, it's a channel that dissects and reports on internet controversies and scandals. Uh, Christy uses her journalism background to showcase the stories from a totally different point of view. She's, re she's really a respected content creator who has been immersed, um, and immersed in the YouTube world since she was just a kid, which makes her really an expert. She started her career at TMZ, which to me makes her all that much more interesting. Um, but from dissecting celebrity feuds to unraveling the mysteries behind viral internet scandals, Christie's blend of humor and sharp analysis delivers the juiciest content to her viewers and it keeps her audience hooked. So get ready for a great episode, Spilling the Tea, as we uncover the secrets behind Spill Sesh and the woman who brings it to life. So please enjoy my conversation with Christy Cook. <laughs> Christy, thank you so much for joining us today in person on Misunderstood. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. It's so exciting that you're down here in Florida visiting your yes. parents and everything. So it's funny. We were laughing about this before we started. I have so <laughs> many notes in front of me for anyone that's watching. I love watching it. I love it. I love it. Because I know nothing about what you do. Yeah. And so I just think it's, I had to have these by me just in case I could refer yeah. to some notes because it's like talking to someone who is like a brain surgeon <laughs> or something that, that you really know totally nothing about. Totally foreign. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Totally foreign. So I, I apologize if I have to look down to, no, you're fine. to get to my question. I love this. Um, so, all right. You have 70, 735,000 subscribers on YouTube. You have Spill Sesh. It is a T channel. What is a T channel? I mean, I feel like that term is so like ever evolving. Mm -hmm. When I first started making these videos, it was very much like me reporting on influencer news. A lot of it was beauty based. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the beauty influencers Mostly because at the time, a lot of the news outlets were reporting on celebrities, like right. the everyday celebrity that's on television and movies and influencers were not taken seriously in the media. I think a lot of people were just like, uh, they have followers, but what does that mean? Does that translate to monetization or what is that even are, like, are these people even real that are right. following them? And so I was always just so into online influencers and YouTubers and that became like my TV for basically like when I was in middle school on, yeah. that's the content I was consuming. And I was like, there's gotta be like other people out there that are just as invested in these people's lives mm -hmm. that wanna hear what's going on or what they're coming out with or if they're in a scandal because no one else is talking about it. Right, and you were asking those questions because eventually you went to work at TMZ and so those are the questions naturally <laughs> that would be on your mind. But I do think it's interesting because you know, as a parent who has a young daughter who watches all that stuff and mm -hmm. does the get ready with me yeah. and all that stuff, she knows who every influencer mm -hmm. is. She knows their name. I still don't understand how some of these people have like 5 million followers, That's 7 crazy. million followers. But it's like a name that I've never heard of. How, did the, yeah. how does someone get to that point? 
And for me, I was watching it on Instagram, I guess. Yeah. For my daughter, you know, she, as a younger girl, was really watching stuff on YouTube and mm -hmm. the channels. But, like, talk about the influencers for a second. How, like, how do they even get there? And how do we know if they're real or if those likes are, are bought? I, I just don't understand who these people are. <laughs> <laughs> I think definitely a valid question. Okay. But, I mean, I think on YouTube, it's all just about the algorithm like a lot of it really is luck too okay. if you hit a trend at a certain time youtube will push your video out and i think back then like a couple years ago maybe like five years ago that was really a big thing where you would see someone participate in a trend and they had like a new take on it or something and suddenly everyone is just like i love this new and fresh take that this person is bringing to the table right. i want to consume all their content they're binge watching all the other videos that they have and then they're waiting every week for them to post. Right. And so, so it was like really yeah. opinion based, but it was about topics that everyone was talking about. Yeah. So like nowadays, like let's say, I mean, I've seen your stuff, but like if we're talking about Kate Middleton, that oh, yeah. to mainstream America, well, all over the universe, I guess, yeah. it's like, where is Kate and for all sure. the, you know, conspiracy theories. But it's like you're talking about these people would take something like that, put a fresh take on it or a funny spin, mm -hmm. because I feel like everyone is talking about everyone things. is talking about it yeah so but like how does someone set themselves apart i mean for kate middleton for example i was seeing this stuff go around for the last couple of weeks mm -hmm. and i'm i'm seeing it on twitter i'm seeing it on instagram and because can you be too late to it because like you know. said you've been think, seeing it for a while i think it depends so people have been talking about it and then i i was just like I don't, I don't get it. Like what, she, so she had surgery. Right. She's probably just recovering. And then I start seeing the things that are being said about this Instagram photo. And I'm like, okay, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Something is a little sketchy here. So then I'm looking into all the details and I personally like to look at what everyone is saying mm -hmm. and be the place that's like, this is what these people are saying. This is what these people are saying. Like Got kind it. of letting people make their own opinions. Mm -hmm. Definitely didn't start that way when I was making content. I was definitely giving more opinions of my own or um, sometimes I still will depending on the topic. If like someone like committed a crime, I'm gonna yeah. be like, that's bad. Right. <laughs> but um, sure. in this case where we're talking about like a conspiracy theory, I'm like, this is all the information I have found. Yeah. What the heck? Are you guys thinking about it? Right. So just while we're on that topic, what have you found or what what do you think is the reality of Kate I mean, Middleton? I think I'm hoping that she's just recovering and it's all going to be fine. Right. The Like they had put out a statement saying that she was going to be back around Easter, mm -hmm. after Easter. So I'm like, okay, hopefully after Easter, she's coming out. She's It'll doing a little photo down. op, family yeah. photo. Everything is good. Right. But I definitely think that the way that they've been moving has been not helping the conspiracy theories, the Photoshop photo debacle, right. that whole thing. Of course, people are going to speculate after something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. It's interesting to me as someone who studied um, journalism and has been part of media for a long time, you know, but like old school, you know, I worked at CNBC, I worked at Bloomberg News. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we learned how to do journalism, like yeah. from books, right? And from understanding the do's and the don'ts of it. Oh, yeah. Whereas nowadays, anyone can grab their phone and make videos, totally. make opinion videos, mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be fact. So something, well, I want to get into this and then go back to how you got into it. But I do <laughs> think it's important to understand how people are, you know, uh, verifying sources, verifying really? opinions. I can't even say verifying opinions because that doesn't make sense. But, yeah. you know, they're speaking with such authority on topics that they don't know and people that they don't know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, obviously that goes viral because people just want to consume that. Yeah. But, like, is there a point where that's, like, dangerous because it doesn't make any sense and it's just creating, you know, a herd mentality to believe something about someone that may not be For true? sure. I mean, there's tons of accounts on Twitter that, you know, they're not news outlets, but they're posting stuff as if it's a fact 100%. And mm -hmm. then I've definitely seen it where they're retracting, taking it back. I mean, that that does happen. I mean, AP had to take back that photo of Kate that right. they put out with the family. But well, That's a good point because that they're a very credible news station which and they was to take just it back. Right. crazy. Mm -hmm. But I think it's just one of those things that you really have to be careful with what you're consuming online. Make sure that you are doing your homework. If you're right. going to talk about something like it's a fact mm -hmm. you should maybe look at more than just one source or 
look at maybe what the opposite side is saying. Right. Just to try. Yeah. I've been hearing a lot about the benefits of fasting and they all sound amazing. Weight loss, increasing your mental and physical performance, good gut health. But I never thought I could do the whole not eating thing. That was until I tried Prolon. Prolon is a plant-based nutrition program that nourishes the body while making cells believe that they're fasting. It was researched and developed for decades at the University of Southern California Longevity Institute and backed by leading U.S. medical centers. Prolon helps promote healthy blood sugar, supports cardiovascular health, and reduces abdominal fat. But Prolon isn't a diet. It's a science. And it all starts with Prolon's five-day program full of snacks, soups, and beverages, all designed to keep your body in a fasting state. It's unlike anything you've ever experienced. So I did the five-day program last week. Okay. I, I really cannot tell you how great it made me feel. It's like pressing the reset button. First of all, they send you everything you need for the entire week in a box. It's prepackaged, labeled day by day and ready to go. My favorites were the soups, actually. I'm not like a big soup fan. Um, you know, last time I had soup was like ramen or something. Um, the tomato soup, amazing. I actually was thinking of like ordering more. Um, also, they have like these little um, chocolate crisp things that are... Uh, really good. I mean, I could have snacked on more of them for sure. Um, and they have little packets of, um, olives that were so good. You really, you don't feel hungry. Um, so I, you know, I I can't say more about how it made me feel. I was nervous to do it. I will be honest with you, but, um, you know, the best part was that I didn't feel the hunger that usually comes along with the fast. And I really just loved it. And I, I will tell you, I do fit into my clothes better this week. So right now, Prolong is offering Misunderstood with Rachel Yucatel listeners 10% off their five-day nutrition program. You go to prolonglife.com slash understood. That's P-R-O-L-O-N-L-I-F-E dot com slash understood for this special offer. That's prolonglife.com slash understood. Are you tired of trying skincare trends that you see online that have 7 million overcomplicated steps and then don't even work? That's what led me to today's sponsor, One Skin. Their products make it easy to keep your skin healthy while looking and feeling your best. No complicated routine, no multiple step protocols, just simple, scientifically validated solutions. The secret is One Skin's proprietary OS01 peptide. It's the first ingredient proven to switch off the aging cells that cause causes lines, wrinkles, and thinning skin. And those aren't just empty promises. They've got studies to back it up. If you've listened to my podcast, then you know I've been using One Skin products for a while, and I'm totally hooked. I use them every day consistently, and I take them with me when I'm traveling. One of the things that drew me to One Skin was they believe the purpose of skincare is not just to improve how we look, but to optimize our skin's biology. They create next-level skincare, and I'm a huge fan. But I'm not alone here. One Skin has over 4,000 five-star reviews and was recognized by Fast Company as one of the most innovative brands in 2024 already. Can't think of a better time for you to get started. Also, I've gifted this to my mother. She now buys it on her own. She's a 78-year-old woman who, if she like was on my podcast, she would tell you how much she's loved it. I can't tell you how many people DM me about purchasing this with, with my code, <clears throat> and they are loving it. Um, can't get enough of it, want to know what I use because, and, and tell me their experience because they basically just, you know, cannot get enough of it. So for a limited time, you get an exclusive 15% off your first one skin, one skin purchase using the code understood when you check out at oneskin.co. Try one skin and enjoy younger, healthier skin without all the extra steps. One Skin is the world's first skin longevity company by focusing on the cellular aspects of aging. One Skin keeps your skin looking and acting younger for longer. Get started today with 15% off using code understood at oneskin.co. That's 15% off One Skin with code understood. After you purchase, they'll ask where you heard about us. Please support our show and tell them we sent you. All right, so let's get back into how you got into this. First of all, how old are you, can I ask? 26. Okay, so you're very young. Um, You've been doing this for a long time then, basically, and you're very successful. So talk to me about how this idea was born um, for starting it. And did you start with YouTube or explain that whole thing to me? Well, so when the channel formed, I was just home. It was Christmas time, and I was watching a YouTube video, and 
this like corner of the internet where people were talking about influencers popped up and I was like I think I could do this I think I can make a video like this and that's when I started that was like December 2018 so I had made my first video it was about Manny MUA and then from there just kept doing it I was um always wanting to do something in news um I was in in middle school my like broadcast class mm -hmm. and then I did that in high school as well and we did broadcast competitions I was like I want to be a journalist this is what I'm meant to do right and in college I worked at USA Today I was just so consumed with wanting to make videos like multimedia videos my original dream was to work at 60 Minutes Amazing. I loved storytelling yeah and so that's where the love began right but I always did love pop culture news I loved YouTube and just being able to create my own video mm -hmm. and I feel so lucky that things kind of took off and then I could become my own boss and make the content that I want to make every day right and make your own video and have people listen I mean yeah. and watch um what I think is interesting I mean when you started that did you start with like zero like all of us if we were yeah. to start a youtube channel and were you kind of like i don't know if anyone's gonna watch me yeah <laughs> i was just i had i had created so many youtube channels over the years in okay. middle school i had a youtube channel my friends and i would make music videos and then i had a vlog channel and i had a cooking youtube channel and did those i all tried grow it all organically i mean a little bit but just nothing was taking off right. i was okay this was this was the one that did it I was right. like oh my gosh what is going on right so now you started that then when you were working at TMZ right mm -hmm. okay so talk about TMZ because I think like people gloss over the fact that you work there it's really hard to get a job there now I mean it I applied to every job under the sun mm -hmm. I knew I wanted to live in LA so badly so I applied everywhere I was just praying any job I could get when I first moved to LA I was a Warner Brothers tour guide for a hot five minutes no way yeah that's amazing it was it was honestly one of my favorite jobs because they hired in groups of like 20 to 40 people mm -hmm. and everyone was like fresh out of college I was still in college at the time but everyone was new to LA so we we all bonded we were all like going through training together I made a lot of my really close friends that I still have to this day from that job that is so cool why did that yeah. end um I got the job at TMZ got it. so okay. TMZ was a Warner Brothers company at the time. We okay. worked at Warner Brothers. I had a Warner Brothers email. So then you could internally like apply for jobs. I think that's how I got the job. Got it. I applied to be an intern. So, and then at Warner Brothers, I became like a full-time employee. So technically I was like taking this risk. I was like, okay, going from, I have benefits to I'm going to be an intern. Right. But you knew that working at TMZ would be like a foothold what, to yeah. anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but what was the process of interviews there? Like, did you have to go meet Harvey? I didn't interview with Harvey, but I, I interviewed with my boss at the time. His name was Jeffrey and mm -hmm. I loved him. Like, we had a FaceTime interview and then he wanted me to come in. Mm -hmm. I had just watched 13 Reasons Why just before this interview. And he came in and we were talking about, you know, where he would possibly place me in the office. And then he had started talking about 13 Reasons Why. I was like, I just watched this last <laughs> night. We're bonding over the show. Right. I was like, oh, please, like, please, please, please. And he ended up hiring me. And what did you do there? So when I was an intern, I worked in the research department mm -hmm. and just like really Google searching like all day long, who's posting what, what stories are coming in. Am I seeing something on Instagram that we haven't, you know, put in the email chain, things like that. But mm -hmm. then I also expressed that I, I loved doing on camera interviews because on the side I had freelanced mm -hmm. for um, this website. It was called like Entertainment News. And we would go to a lot of the Nickelodeon, Red Carpet, Teen Choice Award stuff. It wasn't paid, but it was more so for your portfolio sure. so that you had stuff to show for. Mm -hmm. And in trade, like, they would get content. And so I'd express that I really love that. And they have a sister website called 2Fab. Oh, and right. Yeah. they do the red carpet stuff. Mm -hmm. So then I started to do the TMZ research and going to 2Fab, like, red carpet events and things. Oh, fun. Editing for them. And I really just expressed, like, I want a full-time job. I'm not going back to school. I'm doing school online. Like, please hire me full-time. 
And was Mike Walter still there when you no. started? No. Okay, so it was just, um, what, Charles mm-hmm. and um, and Harvey running it. So did, yeah. were you part of that morning meeting or whatever that meeting is? No, but I would see it. I would see it very close to the desk, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. And um, so I think that people are, like, obsessed with, stuff that happens in TMZ because they, (laughs) well, they really, I mean, you know, it kind of started as what people thought was a a gossip channel. Yeah. um, But then became something that people really get their news from. I mean, they break their news and Harvey, I I know Harvey very well, but you know, they've reported on me plenty of times. But um, what's interesting about them is they're not just gossip and they are very good about knowing to check with sources Mm -hmm. and which is what I wanted to get into again, because, you know, I think, uh, and I'm curious about, you know, your spill st- sesh stuff, if it's just more opinion and you make sure to go down that road, or do you feel like you have to have two sources, three sources, or do you have to be mm-hmm. calling people to know what you want to put out? And does that sometimes hinder you from putting out um, articles or whatever, totally. not articles, but stories? Whatever. I definitely learned a lot from that job mm-hmm. and the fact that people do think that they just like put whatever out. Yeah. I'm like, it's very intense. Yeah. They really take it seriously about what they are putting out there. Yeah, they want to be first, but they also want to be right because taking something back ruins your name. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think it depends on the story for me when I'm putting something out. If something is really serious, like if it's an allegation or there's a really big scandal going on, I definitely want to wait until there's maybe a couple articles out I can like cross reference okay this is what this website says this is what NBC is saying so you're not trying to beat someone from coming out with the news you're you're just you want to hear what's going on before you make your yeah most of the time I'm kind of also waiting to see what the public opinion is so that I can kind of say this is what these people are saying this is what they're saying just kind of maybe there's like a devil's advocate in there just so everyone has all the all the, All the stuff, facts, yeah. yeah. So that they can make an educated decision. Yeah. yeah. Something about TMZ, and, and I've worked in the newsroom before at different places, like I mentioned, um, it's about being um, first but fast. Like, mm-hmm. um, you know, you have to know how to be aggressive. You have to know how yeah. to research things. You have to know how to have a sense of urgency, mm-hmm. which I now possess in my life, which yeah. I think is somewhat intense for a lot of people. But for me, it's like if someone texts me, I text them right back. Like yeah. there's never a time that within two minutes you will not hear from me. And two minutes is a very long time to, for me to respond, <laughs> you know. Um, so but that is that is one of the things I learned from working on a newsroom. For floor. sure. Like you are always thinking. You are always responding. You are always present. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I like that. And I, I think that's a really good quality in someone for mm-hmm. um, any, any aspect yeah. of their life. It just makes them more resourceful. Um, so just one more thing on TMZ, was there ever a story that was like the biggest story that you worked on or one you really wanted to work on? I mean, not really in the sense that when I interned, I was in the research department and then I did two fab. And then when I got hired, I was doing the photo galleries. Mm -hmm. So when you're on the website and you're seeing, um, Sophie, like Sophie Turner's birthday, like check out her hot shots, like that was digging those photos out, oh, so <laughs> scrolling fun. on her Instagram, looking for her pictures. Right. Um, or we would do what's the friggin' difference? And oh, we'd yeah. Like Photoshop I never out those. photos. Like, um, it'd be like a side by side of the same picture, mm-hmm. a, like a little game. It was a weekend thing. We just write it up. What's the difference between these pictures? Like, what's Photoshopped out? What's Photoshopped in? Got it. What's like duplicated? So. Okay. That I, was I sometimes what I did would mostly. stop and look at those, and I couldn't find the difference. <laughs> we made them hard. We yeah. made them hard, yeah. Okay. All right, so it was a Photoshopping thing. I, I didn't realize Yeah, the it was... freaking difference was a Photoshopping thing. Okay, Like, Got is the it. building in the background missing? Yeah. Got it. Okay, good. People uh, being, you know, on top of their stuff that they're looking at. Okay, <laughs> so, um, all right, let's get back to Spill Sesh. How did you start to realize that it was taking off? Was there one specific video that went viral that really blew you up? There was definitely a time period that things were starting to get crazy. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I think I really have something here. But there was the Trisha Paytas was breaking up with Jason Nash. He was in the David Dobrik group. And she had posted a video just going off on them. She was crying. I had downloaded the video. I was literally in the airport on my way to Vegas for my friend's 21st birthday I see my flight is delayed. I'm like, I have this video downloaded. I saw she deleted it. 
And I was like, I got to get this up right now talking about the fact that she did this. Mm -hmm. And I did. It uploaded right before my flight took off. And when I landed, it had like the most views I had seen at the time. And I like stayed at the hotel like that night, just like, oh my gosh, I got to like be on this. Like I was really excited about it. Um, And then after that was the college scandal. Right. That really took it up a notch with um what was the girl's name olivia, olivia jade. jade okay mm-hmm. um and and you reported on that and that took off yeah. obviously that was huge in you know younger news and then also in just for sure mainstream media everybody found that yeah. very interesting what was your take on that it was crazy to me just because i had watched her youtube videos for so long i'd been really like oh my gosh it's you know Aunt Becky from Full House like her daughter is making YouTube videos and what was someone your age thinking did do you think it was obnoxious or did you like her like I liked her I thought that the videos that she made were fun I mean she was in high school and she was coming out with like a palette at Sephora I loved the videos where she would try and find like cheaper duplicates for expensive like higher end luxury products and okay. like Bethany it was, does now yeah it was yeah, just okay it was relatable. I thought that her content was that way. And she had talked a lot about, oh, you know, I don't like school. School's annoying. And I think a lot of high school kids are relating to that kind of sure. stuff. Yeah. But then when you're hearing that and then you see that she's getting into USC, I definitely was like, okay. I mean, maybe she's just really good at taking tests. But I was like, that's my dream school. And that was a really hard school to get into. Yeah. I did not get in. So I was maybe a little bitter boots about it. Mm-hmm. But I was just like, Maybe she's just like playing up that she doesn't like school or something. Right. So when this came out, it was crazy. Yes. And for someone like you that followed her, I mean, I more followed her mother and what Mm -hmm. happened with that whole thing. But yeah, did that ruin her reputation? Like, what is she doing now? Yeah, I think for a very long time, it definitely ruined her reputation Mm -hmm. just because people were like, you're spoiled, you're ungrateful. I think time healed that in a way a lot of people were like okay well you know she's 17 18 at the time and if you're raised to you know in this environment where your parents are wanting to pay this backwards route for you to go to school like you're not gonna know any better than just what you're being taught or what's I don't remember was she saying that she didn't know the details or did she apologize like do, do we know whatever happened with that I don't necessarily remember if she was saying that she knew or not I don't remember that part Yeah I think I well she had to know to some extent because they said she, she was on the rowing team Yeah and she knew And she she's did not it on row. the rowing team Right I guess it was interesting that they let her vlog her life to such great extent in college mm-hmm. knowing how I guess they just thought that no one would ever find out right but it didn't help that she had all those videos out there right no of course yeah that's terrible um so now when you started spill sesh you did it you started it anonymously right Mm -hmm. and you changed your voice Mm -hmm. tell the listeners about that because i think that that's really interesting because my listeners i think are a little older than your listeners Mm -hmm. but not by much and i think that our person that we know is dumois which is very similar she doesn't change her voice though right I'm not sure. I think she does. She does a podcast, and I don't think that's her real voice. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah. So explain that to me because I think that's very interesting that you chose to do that. Did a little gossip girl moment, mm-hmm. but I I don't know. I think there was something about it all that I didn't want to be on camera, and it wasn't just because of like the stuff that I was talking about because prior to that, I had a food YouTube channel where I was making – like the BuzzFeed tasty style videos, if you've seen those like Uh follow along recipe videos. And I wasn't in those videos, just like my hands. Mm -hmm. And I think I felt like I could be more creative or show my personality more if I wasn't in it. Or like I felt like no one I knew was going to see it. Right. I could just give it my all. Interesting. So you didn't care about the fame that came with it. You didn't care. And and did it for the, what was it, five years you were anonymous? Yeah, it was almost five years, yeah. Okay, and so was there speculation? Would people start to say, oh, I think it's so-and-so, or I hope it's so-and-so, I hope it's not so-and-so? There was definitely a lot of times where people had speculated on who I was and people trying to find me, and I'd just be so nervous. I'd be like, oh, my gosh, like, I guess nervous, one, that people would find me, but more so just that it would get out in such a, like, not fun way, and it would just be this downer. Right. 
Um, but a lo- for a while there, people thought I was Shane Dawson's sister-in-law, Morgan Adams. They thought we had like the same voice, but I was like, oh guys, that's, it's not, I hate to break it to you. And I think a lot of people were disappointed when it wasn't her. I was like, I tried to tell you, I tried right. to tell you guys right. it wasn't me. I love her, but no. <laughs> yeah. So when was it last year that you came Yeah, out? last November. And explain at what point, you know, finally you decided to do it and how you did yeah. it. Yeah. So it was I think like a couple months prior to that, I put the video out in November. We filmed it in October, but I had always said my first video on YouTube was about Manny MUA and he does makeup. And I wanted the video to be fun. I didn't want it to be me sitting there alone, just telling people like, hi, like this is me. And this is like all the things that have happened in my life. And I didn't want it to feel like I was just telling people or like talking about myself for like 30 minutes. Um, so I, I thought I would have Manny be in the video because he said he was down to do my makeup and make it this full circle moment. Mm. I was like, that would be really fun. He was game. I've like made videos about him over the years. So the fact that he was game, I was like, okay, cool. How did you even contact him and tell him it was you? We have a mutual friend. Okay. So like he was doing my friend Sloan's podcast and then we had met and then we had DM'd a couple times and I was like, I think... I'm ready to do it because he was like, whenever you want to do it, just let me know. Give me a heads up. So then we we were setting up the date. But what really made me want to do it was I said I I would only come out if I had like a team like behind me to really help me do it because I was so scared to do it mm-hmm. alone. So my friend Sloan also, his manager at WME contact, like hooked me up with a publicist. And I was like, I really want to work with Emily Blair. And once – We got connected. I was like, okay, I feel really good about this. I have people behind me that are really going to make this all come together. Mm -hmm. A little less scary. So what did they do for you that you weren't already doing for yourself? Or did you have somewhat of a team at this point a little bit? I did not. It's always just been me. But I think I just wanted another person there to kind of help me just honestly coordinate filming it too. Because I'm not on camera in my videos so oh, right. we someone got a studio, video, yeah. we had someone come and film it, we had someone come and edit it for me because I was just like way too nervous for it to like, all be in my hands. Mm. But they helped me with that and um, just set up interviews for me to do. I interviewed the New York Times, came to the house, and that was just the craziest. I saw that, you know, in doing research about you, I saw that the New York Times did a whole story on it, which I still, you know, I think that's amazing, good for you, and that's so interesting, though, that what you had done, um, you know, became such a big deal to older people that read that, you know, yeah. when I say older, I don't mean old, but I mean, it's not just the people in their 20s or yeah. teens or um, that are following some of these names that I still had to look up and I was like, yeah. who the hell is she talking about? <laughs> but like, obvi- and when I said the names this morning, my daughter said, who are you going to interview? And I said, you, and she was like, oh my God. And her and her friends start <laughs> pulling up your YouTube things and they're eating their acai bowls and they're so into oh your gossip gosh. about, How cute. you know, Jojo Siwa yeah. or whatever, Dance Moms. I'm like, yes. wait, didn't Dance Moms end like 10 years ago? She's like, mom, Ugh, you know. They're doing like, a reunion. Yes, that's right. So she was explaining yep. the whole thing to me. But um, no, I think that's great that obviously you are being noticed for um, the work that you've done and how many people you've you know, targeted, so to speak. So actually, I want to go and ask you questions about this kind of thing. Like, explain to me how some of these people get famous. We were talking about this a little bit before, but like, um, you know, uh, what is her name? Tana? Tana? Oh, Tana Mojo. Yeah. Yeah. Who is she? What is that? (laughs) What is that? (laughs) Um, Tana has been online for so long. I think that's that's one of the things. She's like an OG YouTuber where she's just been online. She's been through so many scandals and she's still going. And I, I feel like she's had this resurgence almost okay. in doing her podcast because for a while there, she wasn't really posting on her YouTube channel. Maybe like once a month or every couple of months she would post a video. But because she posts a podcast episode every week, everyone's always talking about her. Okay. And she, I think it's the candidness in her that is the reason why people do love her so much because she's willing to talk about everything all the time no matter like how nasty it might be um or 
what people will think about her. Right. I think that's why people like her. But when you say she's been through scandals, mm -hmm. I find that interesting. What scandals are we talking about? <laughs> so she, it, I don't remember what year it was, but she had thrown a convention. If you know what VidCon is, mm -hmm. it's the YouTube convention. She didn't get invited as a like featured creator. Okay. And when you're a featured creator, you get security and you know, you just you're VIP. Sure. They're yeah. taking you seriously as a content creator. Mm -hmm. So she was like, I'm gonna throw my own convention then. So she threw her own convention, same weekend, a hotel nearby. A lot of YouTubers were like willing to go and do her and greets. Yeah. Of well not the other one. instead, but they were all they were gonna addition. do both. Yeah. They had sold all of these tickets, but it ended up being like fire festival. It was a disaster. No way. The venue was way too small. They had oversold. All these people were outside passing out, sunburns. Wow. It was just a disaster. So she was like 17, 18 at the time, and everyone just came for her neck. They were like, you did this. Like, this was so irresponsible. She's posting a video, like, crying, apologies. But was it like Fire Festival where they had no intention of following through because they, at the kind of as they started to get through it, they realized this is, this yeah. isn't really going to work? So that or, is like, she what just happened. was 17 yeah. and didn't know what the hell she was doing. I think both. So she was 17 and there was people around her. It was real that are, people that yeah, were Yeah, like her manager at the time. People around her were just hyping it up like this is going to be great. It's going to be fine. And she's like, yeah, you know, not thinking to maybe do her own research in sure. it. And at the time, people just came for her because her name is written all over of it. Of course. Wow. I, well, big lesson. And if you're going to put your name on something, make sure you sure. know who's working for you yeah. and what they're doing. But she says like Shane Dawson like saved her career because – he did a whole video series on TanaCon and really did make it seem like it wasn't just on her. You know, there were other right. people that were making her really confident in the event mm -hmm. and it's why it, it ended up happening. So. So did it ever happen again? No. Okay. So Never they again. So gotten to that point. But I did see that you posted something recently with her that she does some live stuff but is that just with her podcast or yeah she's on tour right now okay yeah how does that work with people that they go on tour and it's similar to that though that they have all these people buying tickets yeah to come and watch them and so yeah they like buy out these theaters it's like a comedy show mm -hmm. where you watch someone do stand-up but they just technically do like a live podcast where i think they're just like telling stories that they maybe just wouldn't share on the internet probably right. a little bit more explicit they're cursing more things like that i think for someone like me, who's like a parent or, mm -hmm. you know, older than her, explain to me about these um, influencers. Like, what are they going to do for a job f for the rest of their life? Like, I don't mean that in a, in a negative or yeah. judgy way. I'm just really curious because totally. they've spent so much of their life on uh, camera, mm -hmm. either, you know, doing their makeup in the morning and that sells and yeah. that's getting them uh, money, you know, because mm -hmm. brands are sponsoring them. Or whatever it is, whether it's getting naked, you know, and they're doing OnlyFans. But, like, at a certain point in their 30s or whenever it becomes 40s, they have to know how to do something, right? 100%. Or do you think this will translate into something for them? Like, I think a lot works. of people have to know that it could go away tomorrow mm -hmm. and that you have to have something else or you have to have a plan or you have to at least – some skills. Say, yeah, you have to yeah. save your money in some way. I know – some people own a lot of properties and they also rent those out. That's an income for them as well, aside from just being an influencer or people have their own podcast studios that they rent out or things like that that are more just a little bit more solid. Substantial. Yeah. yeah. So, but the money is really there, right? I mm -hmm. mean, because again, a lot of us will look into that lifestyle and be like, they're not really making that kind of money. They're not buying yeah. $5 million houses. But it seems that they are living very good lives and making the money as they should now when they're young. That's great. So yeah. how does that translate? D did that translate for you? Were you able to buy a home? Were you able to do what you wanted and not be like a 26-year-old living off your dad's credit card? <laughs> like a lot I definitely are. could not live off of my dad's mm -hmm. credit card. I love him, but he, they would not let me. They would not want me to. Right. And... 
I know they 40 just could not. who still are living off of their parents. So, you know, it's impressive when you make your own money. Early. Yeah. But go ahead, it's, tell me. It's definitely been amazing. Um, it's definitely giving me gifts. I just never could have believed I did buy a house. And so just being able to tell my parents, like, you don't have to worry about me was, like, the best gift ever. Are they so proud of you? Yeah. Oh, that's so cute. I love that. And, like, giving back to them is, like, the best. Right. I'm, like, just bought my mom, like, a Disney pass. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Did she go? No, like, oh. there's they're moving, um, like, in the next week to come – closer to me so I'm is really that why happy. they're moving yeah oh. I'm the only baby so I love that be closer so sweet yeah um okay so for people that are listening that want to see like want to understand some tangible things let's mm -hmm. since we're talking about money let's talk about that how did you start making money mm -hmm. and explain how that works and how you do it to to make more yeah um, was it certain products that you are um, seeking out or people just came to you? Are there things that do better with influencers? Like explain that whole thing. I think it's different based on like every influencer, or every person that is making content on the internet. A lot of influencers are making their money through brand deals and that's that's how they're getting it just by but promoting products. But do they have to get products. a manager to do that, do you think? Not always. There will be people that just email you or contact you if you have your email in there mm -hmm. I definitely like I don't have like a sign like manager but I do have like someone that brings me deals here and there mm -hmm. and I also just get emails sent straight to me and and give me an example of a deal it's not like oh if you uh drink a celsius we'll send you a case it's like yeah much more it's not so much like a lot of people do get like pr and like free products and things like that most of the deals that come in for me are like uh, VPN deals or apps, certain games on the phones mm. or um, let's see. I've been doing Scentbird for a while, which is like a perfume subscription company, which I love them. I really do. I would not ever promote something I do not actually use. Okay. I just feel like I can't. I can't actually like sell it. Like I cannot like be believable if I don't like it. Yeah. Um, and I just love when I'm working with something that I like really love and I'm like, Oh my God, like I can't believe this is free. <laughs> like I just worked with um, bright sellers and they do like wine subscriptions. So I got like all the, all these white wine bottles. I'm like, okay, love this. So fun. Yeah. Um, but what, how, like how does it work in terms of, is there a mathematical formula? Like, do you have to have a certain amount of viewers mm -hmm. for them to be sending you a certain amount of dollars per se? Like, how does that work? It def it definitely is like, followers equates to how much they will want to give you but also it it depends on how many viewers are actually clicking on the links that you're telling them to go and go to because you could have a million followers and only five people click sure. on your links and then people are like what like yeah I don't want to buy that because most of these brands do want to look at your analytics. They want to see mm -hmm. more than just the number. They're asking you to screenshot your demographic, who's clicking, who's watching, the retention time on your videos, how long are people watching, when are they clicking off. Right. Those are the things so that people, people want. I mean, I think this is good for listeners, though, because mm -hmm. I think, you know, in all of our DMs or wherever, you get these, you know, things saying, hey, I can help you with this. Buy these likes or yeah. whatever. Like, I see that all the time. But you guys really, it's important to have organic followers mm -hmm. because that's how you're getting paid and yeah. it's being um, translated to someone who's watching these analytics, correct? Correct. Yeah. So, um, and also talk about, like, are they sending you a read? Like on our podcast, we have mm -hmm. obviously ad yeah. sponsors and we have to do a read. You must take that really seriously then. Most of the time I'm, I'm writing them myself. They oh. usually send like a brief of these are the points we want you to hit, mm -hmm. but you... I've never gotten like a script. Right. That's like, I do think like that's more of a podcast thing is when they send like a full what they want you to say, like verbatim. Yeah. But aside from the code and a few points that they want you to talk about in the company, they're mostly like just do put your, your spin on it. But yeah. that's important because again, we're talking about how you've succeeded financially. You're taking those brand deals seriously because you mm -hmm. want them to sell because that's yeah. how you're it's translating to dollars for you, yeah. right? So do you have a favorite sponsor that you've ever had? Or do you like all I of them? mean, gosh. I mean, I definitely love Semper. That one's, like, been my, my loyal one. Mm -hmm. um, I loved 
what like hello fresh that is oh, so yeah. fun whenever they send it and i love cooking in general so yes. when i get to film that i'm like oh i'm going back to my youtube cooking channel days exactly yeah i have had hello fresh sponsor me a couple times and it is really fun i yeah. like that I'm i like, mean the food is good it is good it really is um so okay so ta let's talk more for the listeners a little bit about how they can get started is it important mm -hmm. to find a niche in what you are doing or can you be someone that just goes on there and talks about I mean I feel like anytime you look at a channel whether it's um, TikTok or YouTube mm -hmm. they're talking about pop culture yeah. for the most part mm -hmm. so how do you differentiate yourself and you were talking about earlier that it's about the algorithm and sometimes you just get picked up but like sure. how can someone listening that wants to have their channel do better or their TikTok do better what are some pieces of advice I really think you have to pay attention to the things that you really love the things that you're talking about with your friends those are the things that you should be talking about if you want to be on social media because it's going to sound the most organic. It's not going to sound forced. Not like you're trying. People want authenticity. They're craving it so badly because it's so oversaturated out there. Mm -hmm. People really want just real authentic people to be talking about the same things that they love. And I think consistency is also key. The algorithm on any platform really loves consistent people. Mm -hmm. If you're posting once a week, keep posting once a week like on the same day they'll remember it I guess if you post like twice and then you post like you know not for two weeks Got then it. they kind of it just don't know time. where you're at obviously people have blown up that way but I think if you post like once a week or you want to post once every day you'll have a better chance mm -hmm. at something popping off and I think TikTok's algorithm is the best that there is out there although they're trying to ban it yeah but I think in terms of people going viral on TikTok right now that's like everyone's best shot okay so explain that so I think people's ears will per perk up to that mm -hmm. so I have I don't have TikTok myself I have TikTok for the show mm -hmm. I have someone manage it because I don't even know how to get on it quite yeah. frankly except for going on to check out my daughters or whatever but and she gets hers banned all the time. I don't even understand oh, how no. and why. Um, but she's 11. Maybe she's not supposed to be on. I don't yeah, really, that's I don't really know. That's yeah, that's definitely it. <laughs> yeah, maybe I, shouldn't, maybe I should cut that out of the show. Um, <laughs> but um, people learn a lot of stuff on TikTok. So what, sure. are the, what are the keys for being on TikTok and going viral on TikTok? First of all, they're very short segments, correct? Yes. Although now you can do like up to 10 minutes, but I Are think people's attention spans that long on TikTok. I will say I didn't think so until if you've seen that, um, how like who the f did I marry series mm. that just came out. I was like, what do you mean? It's seven hours in total, fifty parts. Each video is ten minutes. Everyone was talking about it. Everyone was watching it. She went absolutely viral. So I'm did like, you watch it? I did. I did okay. watch it. Break it down. Tell me all about it. Let's pretend we're on Spill Sesh and you are talking to me about it because <laughs> people keep talking about it and I don't know what it is. I had to and watch it on like two times speed. While you said that, I was like, this is too long. No, it's understand. too long. That's what I was thinking. But I kept seeing it. I kept hearing about it. And then I was like, you know what? I, I think I got to watch it. So I did. I took the day. I watched the whole thing. It was so long. But she was a great storyteller. Like, they need to get her on Audible and read some of these, like, true crime books or something because mm. she is a storyteller. She was just so detailed in everything that she was saying. But essentially, her ex-husband was a total liar, a fraud. And he told the craziest lies wow. that she just didn't even know who she was married to at the end of the day. Right. And I think people were just so fascinated. Every video, they were like, there's no way like th this can get any worse like how can he lie like this this is he would just be on the phone talking to his family for hours every day turned out he was talking to himself the whole time oh my like God. just faking these calls he's like oh yeah like he says hey he said she says hey but it was no one on the other line right and but it was interesting to me sometimes she would be like you know sitting in her car like yeah chilling. she was filming this any and everywhere but it was just the way that she was telling the story was so ripping yeah right she okay. she was a good storyteller that's so, what it was all right so that's a piece of advice be a good storyteller mm -hmm. know the content that you're talking about so you don't sound uninformed yeah um but and, I, and so you don't think it's important to keep it under three minutes or something i think short i think like a minute a minute is a really good 
time frame. Okay. You could go less. You could go a little bit more. But like a minute is a good. Right. It's a good spot. And people are doing lives. I mean, not lives, but they're, they're like talking to it. Or is it okay to put a clip or, you know, like a essentially a reel or whatever yeah. of some sort of video? I think it there. depends like what you're talking about. People do love a visual reference. They don't want to look at the same clip like you just talking for a very long time. Right. Unless, you know, you are super animated and you're super passionate. I think in the Who the F Did I Marry, like Risa Tisa story, she was so just she was just authentically being herself. And that's right. why people loved it so much, I believe, because she was passionate about the story she was telling. Right. And I think if you're passionate about what you're talking about or the topic, whether you're reporting on your favorite celebrity or you're talking about you're recapping last night's game. Mm -hmm. Whatever topic you want to make your niche, if you love it so much, it will come through. You could add a couple clips or references to what you're talking about so people like visualize if they don't yeah. know. Mm -hmm. But I think passion's got to be there. Okay. What are some of the hot stories you're obsessed with right now? I mean, I've been talking about Dance Moms a lot just because they've been doing the reunion. Mm -hmm. Jojo Siwa, she's trying to do Miley Cyrus banger. She's going from child star she wants to be an adult now mm -hmm. so that's something that's happening this week mm -hmm. i mean not that i'm making a video on it but i'm super into the bachelor at the moment oh you are okay. yes okay. i'm like for the first time in like a while yeah. i feel like this season's kind of got me hooked a little bit i'm like all right let me i have why watched... just because you like him or you just think it's yeah i do i'm like there's something about him he seems really charming and just like adorable yes. in a way. He does have this all American yeah. look to him or, you know, there's something about him that I think resonates with everyone. Sometimes yeah. it's someone that, you know. And I think like the, the drama of um, the spoilers this season have got me hooked because from day one, before I even started watching the season, they were like, this is the girl that wins. And then everyone was like, I love her. She's so cute. If it's not her, then I, I don't want to watch the season. But everyone's saying that it's her. Reality Steve, who leaks all the Bachelor stuff, was like, yeah, it's 100% it's her. And then a couple weeks ago, he was like, so <laughs> I got it wrong. And it's this girl. And now everyone's like, what do you mean? Like, we've been loving this one girl the whole season because we thought it was her. Right. And now it's this girl. Now I'm starting to like this other girl <laughs> better. So, so now have, I'm like, I need to know what happens. Right. So have any of those girls been not uh, gotten rid of? What's the word? Were they? No, they're all. They're both they're still, still left. There. Yes. Okay. So they're it could be supposed to be one. the final two, and what's apparently maybe going to go down is at the overnight date, one of them is going to go to the other girl and say, "It's you. I'm going to leave." And then the clip that they keep showing is him standing there right about to like waiting for the girl to get out of the car to either propose or dump her. And he's just like sobbing. So we're like, does someone not show up? Does oh someone God. say no to him? What? How does I might this have end? to start watching? What night is the bachelor on? On Monday. I think it used to be on Monday. Okay, but now good. I'm like, Hulu, All right. wait until. Yes, yes, yeah. right. <laughs> All right. Well, that sounds interesting. Um, who are the YouTubers that you think are the most influential right now? YouTubers that are, well, I feel like someone just had a popping off moment. Her name is Tara Yummy. She has been on YouTube for so long. And then in the last two months, she has just skyrocketed hundreds of thousands of subscribers, hit a million subscribers. Wow. I feel like every day I was refreshing and she gained 100K overnight, every How? single day. Why? I don't know. And she's been doing interviews talking about how she doesn't even know why I mean, she has been going on some podcasts and I think they have a different crowd or a uh -huh. male audience and they've seen her and they're like, oh, she's funny. She's cute. And then just like more eyes have been on her. What recently. does she talk about? She just talks about her life. She vlogs her life. And I think people just find her relatable. And and so she's just popped off. I really can't explain it. I don't even know how it happened, but she well, here we are just blew up. Yeah, she just her, blew so up. Have to look her up after and that. her ex-boyfriend also blew up too. They're just and he makes videos with someone named Johnny, and the three of them are just like a little trio. Uh -huh. Look like they came out of Hot Topic, right? But everyone loves it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I love. I'm like invested. He eats food in his car. I'm like, oh my god! Suddenly, I want Taco Bell. Right. 
Okay, so those things do well as opposed to like people recapping what happened on Traders or Love is Blind, right? I mean, how would that do on your channel? I mean, if I were to do a vlog, I think people would be like, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> like, what? Is this what you revealed your face for? But I think... Well, do you, I wait, know. on that question though, do you feel like you have to have an interesting life or all these things going on to be no. vlogging? Um, no, I don't know. I think maybe like a little bit, but some people are just... They just put the camera up and, and sit just there like and eat and people love it. I mean, I watch mukbangs like all the time where people are just like eating and talking in their car for like hours. I don't know why I just like throw it on the background and something comforting about it. And will they sit there in silence for a little bit or they some people are... do not talk in these videos. Like some people just eat on camera and do not talk like at all. Some of them like don't even show their face. It's like just like their mouth. <laughs> and they do well. And people. They yeah, they get like millions of views. I don't get it. There's a niche for everyone. I don't get it. What do you think is the difference between, well, not the difference, the similarities, I guess, between people starting OnlyFans accounts and these kind of things? Like, because there's been such an uptick in the last yeah. couple of years, especially during COVID, mm -hmm. of people putting themselves out there. Um, you know, do people, would you ever do an OnlyFans? I don't think I would do an OnlyFans, but I definitely think in order to do an OnlyFans, there has to be like some sort of like, desire to see you first like you have to have like a following of sorts I know people have grown on OnlyFans and like gotten big on OnlyFans right. but I think a lot of them had to have started somewhere else right I think that's an important comment to make because I've had a couple people on my show, show about OnlyFans and they got famous because of something like they were a teacher and got fired for being on OnlyFans and they had mm -hmm. a, just a small account and all of a sudden now they're making yeah. millions but you know um they are making their money based on the subscriptions, whereas somebody in the YouTube channel type of thing or Instagram um, influencer thing is making money on advertisers or sponsorships, right? I mm -hmm. mean, it's just different. It's people wanting to associate with you um, of some credibility as opposed to a, maybe a man who wants to see you cooking naked or whatever it might be or your feet. Yeah, or whatever. some people will tan up for a while. She... She is an OnlyFans, but I think she stopped really posting like really raunchy photos of herself on her Instagram mm. and was like, well, if you want to see that? that, go to my OnlyFans right. because that's what she was posting a ton of like on Instagram. And she's like, well, I might as well yeah. capitalize on it. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, is like the housewives too old for your crowd? No, I think people are definitely very into the housewives. I've like, I've dabbled in it. Uh -huh. I don't know too much about it. You don't watch The Housewives. I don't watch The Housewives, but I know that a lot of people do. Right. So it's not something that would make or break your channel, for example. No, but I mean, there is like the the Bethany lore where I like watched her reality show. So sometimes she'll pop up on TikTok. And I'm like, there she is. Right. So is she someone that you guys look up to or like what, what are I your I think thoughts it's on just her? like a fascinating. <clears throat> it's like just fascinating. Mm -hmm. That's that's all it is. And sometimes she'll just give a straight opinion and I'm like, okay. I could throw this in a video or something mm. where people just have opinions on what she's saying. Do you think she's a little too judgmental in her opinions sometimes? I think sometimes, but I don't know. On TikTok, everyone is judgmental, so she's just oh, okay. saying what everyone is saying, I guess. Um, what do you think is misunderstood about YouTubers? Um, it seems that the only time they make the mainstream news is for something bad, like they mm -hmm. call or whatever. They don't get a lot of credibility where TMZ is covering them because they're famous, per se. Yeah. I think a lot of them have a lot more business strategy than people might realize. Yeah. Especially Mr. Beast. He's oh, yeah. just, I mean, that man. He's got the restaurant. He's got candy in the stores. Oh, see, I didn't even know that. I only products. heard about him two weeks yeah. ago. I got stuck going down a rabbit hole of watching all his videos. I don't get it. Who is yeah. that person? It's just so crazy how much money he makes and also the businesses that he started. But So he started with him and two guys or whatever it is, and yeah, they make it's these like dumb videos? It's like him and his friend group. But so he had heavily researched the YouTube algorithm. Got it. He had said that he had sat there for hours and hours with his friends, and they just did all this research on, like, this – if this – like person's like mouth is open in the thumbnail, it does better. Or like if you're smiling in the thumbnail, it does better. Like the so littlest, smart tiniest yeah. things, the, you know, capitalization of the title or this color background behind me in the thumbnail does better. 
just these little details that he was paying attention to, Mm -hmm. he was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna get there. So the one I watched was where he like buries himself or his friends bury him for 24 hours or two two days, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. I watched the whole thing (laughs) and I'm like, this is a bunch of idiots. Like, what are they doing and why is anyone watching this? And then when I was done with the video, I'm like, I just watched this stupid yeah. thing. Like, so this is it how it It sucks you works. in. Yeah. I think his production quality is just at a different level yeah. at this point because he does have a lot of money to invest in his company. He's right. a company. That's also the thing is YouTubers essentially become their own company, their business. Okay. So the point is, is people should take this seriously. It's not like you should just goof around with it because it, you can yeah, make money. It you looks be silly to people. They're like, people are just making videos on the internet. That's not hard. Or, you know, there's no effort that goes into it. But there is strategy behind it. I mean, obviously, there's a lot more serious jobs out there for right. sure. Right. But, you know, a lot of people are like, how, how do they even make money? Or I'm like, well, they're surviving somehow. Some of these people do know how to move. Some people do just spend it free willy-nilly. And, like, they, you know, end up needing a, a job after because they spend everything. But I think... Those who are going about it the right way are investing their money, saving their money, and I'm probably smart enough to think about the next step. Yeah, ho- and just hopefully planning what's next. Yeah, and it's probably not that far off from what they're doing. They're just mm-hmm. thinking how to fold that into the next thing. Yeah, which is very smart. Um, okay, I want to just do a couple quick fire questions okay. with you. What are you currently binging on TV? Ooh. Uh, I, I'm a, I'm watching Girls right now on HBO. Oh, nice. Yes. Okay. Cool. Um, guilty pleasure food you can't give up even if it's bad for you. Uh, Taco Bell. Mm-hmm. If you could be on any reality show, what would it be? Big Brother. Really? Love Big Brother. I'm obsessed. Okay. Why? I, I'm just like, ever since I started watching it in high school, I just, there's something about it. I love it. I love the, the house. I love the games. I'm like, just the relationships, the strategy behind it all. Do you fall in love with the people that are on it too? Like, do you? I do. I get invested yeah. and I watch the live feeds. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> have you seen Traders, by the way? I need to watch Traders. To Everyone watch is it. talking about Traders. Yeah. I think you would like it. And you might end up, it might be something you become invested I, in. I think so. Um, okay. You have the opportunity to interview three celebrities. Who would they be? Three celebrities? Oh my gosh. Um, hmm. I go like Kim Kardashian, gotta mm. be on the list. <gasps> Who else? Taylor Swift and probably like Rihanna. Okay, those are good ones. Mm-hmm. If you created a channel that wasn't about celebrity or gossip, what would it be about? Cooking and be cooking. What was the first big thing you bought yourself when you really started to make money? Probably my car. Nice. Yeah. What kind of car do you have? Tesla. Tesla. Oh, very nice. Save okay. me a lot of money in the end. Those gas prices in LA are no joke. Yes. Okay. All right. Where can people find you? What can, what are you working on next? I am on YouTube at Spill Sesh, Spill Sesh on Instagram, Spill Sesh underscore YT on TikTok, which I love TikTok. It's just, just like more fun. Okay. I'm posting everything on there. How often do you post, by the way? Like every day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and how could people reach you if they wanted to? Do you have, do you read your DMs? Do you have a yeah, website? Yeah, I read Instagram DMs. I'm always looking to see if people are sending me any tea or anything they want me to look into. So yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining Thank us Thank you today. for having me. Thank you so much for listening to Misunderstood. I'm your host, Rachel Yucatel. Please be sure to subscribe to the show and give us a five-star rating and review. You can support the show by joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash misunderstood with Rachel Yucatel. Do you have ideas for the show or want to reach out? Email us at info misunderstood podcast at gmail.com. That's spelled M-I-S-S understood. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Misunderstood.